audience participation throughout, please. Would you welcome our first guest, Chris Tarrant. I thought you paid for the standing ovation at the end. Well, no, I thought I'd do one early in case I get bored. Um, <laughs> yes. How did you get involved in Tizwas? God. Um, I, was doing, I was doing a news programme. Um, I was a hard news investigative reporter. <laughs> Shut up. God, this could be a long night. Um, and I wasn't... Very, it'll be a big surprise to you, but I wasn't very good, actually. But... I'd done it for about a year or so, and um, they said, we've got this Saturday morning cheapo show we're trying to do for kids, um, would you like to join? And I, I must admit, I loved it. And then it sort of took over my life. And there was a strange period when I was reading the news on a Friday about, there's been a bus crash in the Bilston area, and Saturday I've been throwing buckets over people, which was more fun. And, <laughs> and <laughs> they... They said to me eventually, the sort of, they, cooked, they started talking about the credibility gap, which is fair enough and all that. And I remember this very serious conversation that, Chris, you've got to make a choice, buckets or bus crashes. <laughs> no, but they all went, well, he's obviously going to choose bus crashes, a long-term career. And I went, well, it's going to be buckets. <laughs> and it changed my life. I loved it. I had the best seven or eight years of my life. It was wonderful. And what, what was kids' TV like before that? Crap. Um, <laughs> No, I don't mean that unkindly, but it's crap. Um, I always used to get asked about, you know, what was your motivation for doing Tiswas and producing Tiswas? And I just said, we didn't really have one. We were just young guys and, you know, a very nice lady sort of... In Shut up. <laughs> She'll be on in a minute, don't worry. <laughs> do you know, do you know, whenever I do a sort of audience thing and a Q&A, now, bear in mind, since I've done Capital Radio for 20 years, I did Tarrant on TV, I've done Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for 15 years, the first question always is about Sally James. <laughs> and no, I didn't. <laughs> I bloody tried, but no, I didn't. I think she may have done, actually, a couple of times, but I never did. I think we'd better... Was that an answer to your question? I remember now. No, no, the question... <laughs> Oh. Uh, we, we, we'll move on. Let, let, let's, I think we ought to... Oh, yes, but, so, what was my motive? My motivation for doing Tiswas in the end was just, I just hated bloody Blue Peter. <laughs> I still hate Blue Peter. It's the biggest part of pretentious crap for children. I don't mean this unkindly, it's a fine show, but I just hated it, and I thought it was so sort of condescending, you hardly ever saw kids and all that, so... We just had a very nice time with loads of kids and eventually a load of adults swarming in the cage and all that stuff. So, so it was great. I loved it. Actually, we should point out to you that this is setting a world record for the cage tonight. And if you look up, <laughs> you'll see the, the yeah, custards. And, and the also, bus. luckily, you've all got your dirty, filthy old clothes on, so it's fine. <laughs> Including yourself. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, that is your only suit. Um, let's, oh, just one final question before we look at the clips. You only asked one. <laughs> I haven't got a lot of time. <laughs> On the other side, there was a programme, wasn't there? But we... Oh, eventually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tis... <laughs> oh. Do you know, what we do... No, we always move around, and we always put the dickhead around the front, but for some reason this evening, he's down there! <laughs> now, so we... Um, eventually, it became so successful, Tis was, that the BBC came up with some sort of lacklustre little thing with Keith Chegwin giving away records that nobody wanted in the field somewhere near Birmingham. Noel Edmonds with his Division 4 footballer's haircut. And it, I mean, it was a great show in its way. But what was bizarre was, because Tiswell's ended up, ended up attracting this huge adult audience, and a lot of families, because it was kind of Tiswell's house or Montegallo Swatshaw house, poor busters. And... <laughs> What it was, was like in some houses, the kids would sit there glued to Noel Edmonds and the parents would go up the road and watch Buddy Tisworth. Let's watch some clips. Could we have um, the Chris Tarrant clips? Oh, good. <laughs> Brilliant. What? No, <laughs> <laughs> God. 
If you watch it now, can you, Im <laughs> can you imagine this children's show going out in 2022? No. <laughs> can you imagine the grief we'd get? With those lovely little girls <laughs> singing, <laughs> The Phantom! Yeah! That's brilliant. And Phil Collins and Mike Rutherford in those ill-fitting tights. Oh. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> there was just nothing like it. it was just, there's a lot of these clips. It sounds weird. We, we did a similar thing a few years back in Birmingham. And they ran all these clips all day and we were looking at these things. And I'm thinking, I'm watching this clip with a bloke, it's clearly me, and I'm thinking, I've never seen this clip in my bloody life. And I, I probably wrote it, and it's clearly me in it. And I'm thinking, I've no idea. <laughs> but, and one or two of them were quite funny. Not many of them, but one or two were quite funny. It's, our guys, when they come on, will agree, we just had the best time. The kids hated it, but we had a fun. <laughs> well, let's bring on... Oh, look out, be careful. You could be knocked over in the rush. <laughs> I'm not helping would you, you tonight. Would you I welcome, own? everyone, Sally Oh, Jane. my God, no! <laughs> Calm down, behave. <laughs> behave. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Just behave. I've been listening to you. You're not, you've not been behaving, Chris. You've, I've listened to no, a lot of the good. stuff you said. He's a, in good. a difficult mood, I can tell. Naughty, naughty. He's already been banished to the furthest. I think that's the it. best place for him. In rehearsal, I was told he was Well, here. I was just He's sitting banished. here giving my hands to myself. Good boy. <laughs> so, Sally, we're going to see some clips in a moment. OK. But what I really loved about you on the show was, was all the people you interviewed, the pop stars yeah. and so on. Who are your favourites? Oh, God, with the, such a long list. I mean, it was just crazy. I know Chris has been talking about a lot of the craziness, but the really crazy thing uh, was the amount of people that just wanted to be on Tiswas. I mean, anybody who had a hit record out, any pop star, just wanted to be on the show. I mean, we were sitting in the holiday in one evening just before the show on a Friday night, and so, do you remember this guy tapped us on the shoulder and said... Um, Excuse me, uh, Sally and Chris, I can see you know, you're talking about tomorrow's show, but do you mind if I interrupt? Um, I'm Robert Plant, by the way. And, um, <laughs> yeah, not now, we're full tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, he, yeah, and he said, and, and could, can I possibly come on the show tomorrow? And we go, well, I don't know. But anyway, so of course we invited him on, uh, stuck him in the tights, put a flower around his head, uh, stood him in a bucket, uh, he yelled out, compost corner. And, <laughs> And, you know, we, we pelted him with soot and compost and the rest is history. But that kind of thing used to happen all the time. And we were just so lucky that everyone wanted to be on. They wanted to get involved in, in the show. They were all, everyone would really, really embrace the whole thing. But there was only one person who absolutely stipulated that we must not flan him. Do you know who that was? Not flan, I couldn't even begin to guess. Uh, Cliff Richard. Oh, Cliff Richard. Yeah, he, he, yeah. No, 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 no. In fairness, it wasn't Cliff. It was Cliff's manager. Okay. But do you not think that that would have come from Cliff? No. <laughs> OK. Did Cliff give a reason? Um, did he give a reason? No, we just were told you can't ban Cliff, uh, Flan Cliff, but we were very happy to have him on, so we, we did what he said. And he was a good guest. We, I mean, I think some of the really great guests, though, were people like Spike Milligan. I mean, we were sitting in the office... Spike there, Milligan. And our, our, it was, I mean, to have Spike on was extraordinary. And our secretary was all sitting in the office. We did sort of have planning meetings. I know it didn't look as if a lot of it was planned, but we did. And on a, a Thursday, we'd all be around together, and she'd be opening the post, and she'd go, I've got a letter here from Spike Milligan saying, I think you're all absolutely mad. Can I come on the show? <laughs> and and we, I remember you saying, that's got to be, you know, that, that can't be true. And it yeah. was, and he came on, and he was incredible. And someone like him, and Bob Monkhouse, and uh, Michael Palin, those people on, it, it was such mm. an honour to work with them. Uh, just fantastic. Well, we're going to see a bit of Michael Palin later Good. on. Yeah. Um, Hang on, just wait. <laughs> if I remember, mm -hmm. some clips. We've, we've, Spike Milligan. And seal. Spike. Spike Milligan, didn't he present a kind of mastermind and smoke? Didn't I remember that? I don't think so. We're not that old, Andrew. Well, I, I mean, don't remember it. The only smoking that went on was when we had um, a group of people in the cave. Oh. And um, halfway through the show, uh, somebody pointed out that it, there was a very, very strong smell of marijuana. Unmistakable. And, 
We had this, for some, one of my stupid riders, a celebrity cage. Yes. So we had uh, Motorhead, uh, John Peel, yep. Goldie and the Gingerbreads, sort of Rick heavy, Parfitt, Rick, Rick Parfitt Powell. and a couple of the guys from Quo, several of Oh, and Rainbow. And Rainbow, whatever. all them, yeah. And I'm doing a sketch with Lenny Henry, and suddenly I'm going, I'm the producer of a children's television pr program, we're live on air, and I can smell somebody smoking a joint. <laughs> So then he's going, and I just grabbed buckets and threw them over the cage. Sally joined in and we pelted them and the offending cigarette went out. And we, <laughs> but we've never revealed who it was, have we? No. Rick Parfit. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make him a bad person, but... <laughs> May not be the only revelation tonight, we'll see. Oh, oh, who knows? I think some of the other great things, I mean, I know Chris has talked a bit about we wouldn't get away with half the stuff, you know, that, that we did then. Even, you know, when we did the Tiswell's Reunited show, we had to be very careful about the amount of water oh, yeah, through, yeah. and the water was supposed to be heated to a, a certain mm. temperature. <laughs> and, but and it, the health and safety manual was this thick. But, I mean, we, one of the things that I remember so clearly is, you know that diabolical song, uh, Grandma, by yeah, um, yeah. Oh. Winifred School Park. <laughs> so, these lovely little girls are all about six or seven, you know, and you can imagine their mum saying to them, right, darling, you're going to be on TV, on, uh, on, we're getting you a nice little new dress, and they all came on, and they're all standing there, all very prettily, uh. singing this, this dreadful song, it has to be said, but they were singing it very prettily. And Chris goes berserk with the buckets. <laughs> and these poor little girls, well, they're falling down. It was a crap down, song, they're horrible something. little children. You wouldn't get away. I watched the clip. I don't know if we got this one later on or not, but it doesn't matter. Talking about stuff that we probably would not get away with now. I watched a clip the other day. Somebody said there's been loads of clips. And it was one of the very last, might have been the last ever Tiz was. Now, Sally was a fine co-presenter, a great professional, but also had whopping great um, <laughs> attributes. Chris, my kids are in the audience. Attributes. They hate this. That's all. Attributes. <laughs> so we had this little group of children at the beginning. Pan's little kids all came running on at the beginning. Now you think about this as a children's television programme going out live on a Saturday morning and all these kids came running on in a little sweet outfits with balloons on their front, all being <laughs> Sally Jane. Can you imagine now? Well, you were the be... producer. It must have been well, your idea. Well, I just said... <laughs> let's, let's, I tell um, you, no, let's... I tell you one person... You're out for time. Well, we, 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 I think we're already I tell half you, an hour No, over. I tell you one person, just quickly who came on Tiswas, and because Trevor East, bless him, was a big Derby County fan. So we got Brian Clough on, <laughs> right? Which was, <laughs> it's all right. So I said, uh, Mr. Clough, I'm Chris Tarrant, before the show, I'm Chris Tarrant, and I'm the producer of the show, and Sally, and uh, And he went, I know who you are, <laughs> and I know what you do. <laughs> and if you hit me with those custard cakes, I'll break your fucking legs. <laughs> That's a bit harsh, I thought. Let's, um, let's have... Well, I'm uh, quoting Brian, not me. Let's have some clips with Sally Jane. Hooray! Marvellous. Oh, dear. You, um, you, you talked before about having to make sure the water was a particular temperature <laughs> and so on. Well, we checked, and for the second half, it doesn't have to be a particular time. Oh, good, good. Here, that's so. all right, then. That's, we that's can good. throw as much water as we like. Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have our next guest. Would you welcome Bob Carroll, geez. Yeah. Hooray! Yeah. All good. Have you, um, have you been <laughs> shopping? No, it's been lunch. Lunch? Yeah. <laughs> sure is. Bob, um, uh, let's go straight into some clips with you, shall we? Oh, please. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Marvellous. That was very sensible, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in need. You see me need going you, 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 Trousers were rather tight, Bob, I thought. Well, uh, funny enough, I wore those uh, for a, a, a fancy dress thing about three years ago. 
and uh, I saw an exchange point in the on the back. I've still got the same trousers. Still fit me. <laughs> With the extension in the back. So, so Spit presumably is long retired, is he? And, uh... Yes. Uh, well, he's basically retired. Um, uh, I mean, what happened, this is, if you ask any puppeteer, uh, this started about 15 years ago. And uh, I started to have trouble with my thumb. It's, it's painful. And it, it was, as many of you will know, it's carpal tunnel syndrome. And uh, I carried on doing things, and it gradually got worse and worse. And it got to a stage about five, six years ago, where literally, if I had any character on my arm for more than two minutes, my arm just literally froze like that. And I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. And I had to literally crack my knuckles. To, and this sounds stupid, but it's true. And get my arm going like that. Uh, anyway, so that's why, main, one of the main reasons I stopped working, because I am a, uh, basically a puppeteer, but uh, I, use, I, I call myself a prop comic. All these people up there. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was on the Muppets for a minute. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, basically, uh, I'll start using him. So, but if I do use him, and I haven't had him on now for, I must tell you, it's got to be uh, about three years. Uh, but. <laughs> I take it you'd like to see him. Yes. yes. I was say it'd be, it'd be quite brief, but I mean, I'll, I'll introduce him to you. Uh, but actually, you can help me with this. Um, because, no, it's true. You can help me uh, because what I used to do many years ago was this intro to him, and I used to involve the audience, and uh, you can all join in. I'll cut you down the middle. Sorry, love. I'll cut you down the middle. Now we we'll start with this side, and the song you can sing, you all know it, is. How much is that dog in the window? Yeah, good, good. We'll try it. Here we go. This side only. One, two, three. How much is that dog in the window? Right, this side. <laughs> we'll try you see if you're any better than this lot. Ready? One, two, three. How much is that dog in the window? Very good. Okay. We'll do you all together and carry on with the song. And when you see him, Give him a big cheer. You'll have to sing for a bit longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Everybody, one, two, three. Ready? How much is that doggy in the window? I don't know. The one with the waggly tail. Hey! How much is that doggy in the window? I do hope that dog is for sale. There he is, my little dog, Spit. I'm sorry, love. <laughs> Rub it in. You're right. <laughs> now he does all sorts of different things. You should probably know. He does. Um, he does. Uh, he, 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 of course, she's not sober. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> if you ask him questions, you can ask him questions, and he'll answer. For instance, um, okay, here's a question for you. Uh, what, what do you get at the top of a house? Roof. <laughs> uh, what does sandpaper feel like? Rough. Good. You've got the arm in the navy and the raff. Yes. <laughs> and what do you do with cats? Roof, raff. <laughs> no, anyway, this, this is probably the very last time, believe it or not, I feel my arm going already. It's probably oh. the very last time I'll ever, you've certainly from an audience, but ever use him. So uh, if you'd like to say to you, this is my dog's oh. spit. You didn't like Cough the Cat match, did you? No. Oh, horrible. <laughs> no. And the, the true story is, he turned up one week, didn't you? Just out of, I'd never met Bob no, before. No, what happened was, I'd been working with Frank Carson. Yeah. And it was Frank who said, I'll take you down one of the... I'm doing this show, I'll take you down one of the Saturdays. I knew it was talking about. I was already a fan, because I lived in the Northwest, And uh, we had it up there. And so, 
<laughs> Frank, you should bring a couple of your things down. So, uh, I'll pack you around. Turn up at the studio. Yeah. Frank is always just late. Right, bring one of your things to the studio. I walked in, I took Charlie the Monkey in. Yeah. And uh, I'm just, I've not been, nobody knew I was coming. So I'm doing a few bits with Charlie the Monkey in the children with the hats on him, bouncing up and down. And uh, Chris, after a bit, Chris said, uh, oh, he came, no, before we started, he said, come over here and stand there. You're going to be on the mm -hmm, telly. Uh, so, so I stood there and doing this thing, the kids, and during one of the commercial breaks, Chris came over and said, uh, they're doing me a tape of this. Are they telling me, because I was behind you two, weren't they? Yeah. They're telling me it's funny what you're doing there. Brilliant. And so I said, have you got anything else? I said, I've got a dog. He said, get the dog. So uh, I wasn't mic'd up, so he couldn't hear anything. But from then on, yeah. I think the following week you used me again. Oh, it was massive. Mic'd me up. And then we started getting complaints from parents saying, my children are cleaning their teeth and spitting over the side. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell your bloody kids to behave, it's not my fault. <laughs> but then, I mean, spit was huge, wasn't it? Yeah, there was saliva everywhere, and it was a wonderful <laughs> thing. And, and probably two or three years, spit was, you know, just so popular. It was brilliant, it was good for us. And, um, and then one summer season, I, I popped up to see Bob for it's about four days, I think, of drunkenness, planning the next series. And I said, Bob, you've got to come up with, the spit's great, mate, and Charlie the monkey, you've got to come up with the next best thing. And he went, don't worry. He, his look at his, because we were about six days before we went back on air, and he went, don't worry, Chris, I've got something. <laughs> Nothing. So he turned up on the show. We were both seven sheets to the wind oh. by now, by the way. Just for a change, I put in So there. he turns up, and here we are, Mr. Cowardies and Spit and Charlie the Monkey, and now his newest creation, what's it called, Bob? It's called Cough the Cat. <laughs> it was bright blue. <laughs> I think he just had a bit of old blue material left in his garage. So this thing, and I went, it's great, Bob, what does it do? And he went, it goes, eh, eh. <laughs> Now, spit, still, tonight, has lasted 40, 50 years. Cough the cat did not last after the next commercial break. <laughs> and he bought a garage full thing, and I make a fortune with these. <laughs> OK, let's... Sorry, can I just say... Oh, right. The truth of that is that um, the first time I used him, as I, I'd, I'd have made him in like four days because it was in the full, it was in the national press that I was going to yeah. use this thing called Coffee Cat. So I made a jacket with obviously spit on this arm, Coffee Cat on this arm. I bought a load of uh, squeezy toys for animals, pets, and I thought, oh, that'd be great. And I'll sit amongst the kids. And I told Chris, I'd never tried it in my life. Sat there, and suddenly it was just about to introduce me, and I froze solid because I realised I couldn't pick anything up. <laughs> And I just spent that whole three minutes of, of going, um, uh, spit, this is cough. Uh, cough, this is spit. <laughs> I, and the camera's there. And I can see Chris looking over the camera going. <laughs> right, that's the, story, that's the story of Cough the Cat. Yeah. And I drowned him very, a long time ago. Yeah. Oh. Let's welcome our next guest, oh. Mr. John Gorman. Sorry, pull it back. <laughs> Just got our wages for tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Can you cut that clip we were going to show you, and if you don't mind? Yeah, yeah. shut up. Hello. <laughs> how, how did you get involved? This is what they want. It is. <laughs> Clearly. Oh, um, how did you get involved in Tizwas, John? I was run over by a bus. All oh, right. <laughs> I got a phone call from Gail, the secretary, to say a new producer had taken over, and would you like to come to Birmingham and meet the person? Because the produced before that had been Glyn Edwards. So I got the train to Birmingham, I went into the studios and went up to the office, went into, spoke to Gail. I said, I'm here now, where's the new producer? He said, go out the door, turn right, first door on the right, knock there. Went out the door, turn right, knocked on the door, and a voice said, come in. And it was Chris Tarrant. <laughs> Did he pull my leg? <laughs> no. <laughs> So that, that was it. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> no, 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 no,
Let, let, we've got a few clips of you. You played many roles. Let's have a look at the, the clips, please, uh, for John. I never played him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <full> look out. <laughs> um, excuse me, uh, Mr. Peel. Hello, Mr. Peel. Uh, I don't know if you remember me. I used to be um, in a group in, in Liverpool in the 60s and that, you know. And, yeah, uh, yeah, they all say we, that. We, we, split up and, <laughs> uh, we split up and went in a hard time. Not now, Mr. Peel. Most of them were. And, uh, you know, you've become so famous and that, and number yeah. one disc jockey and all that. I was just wondering, you know, we're a bit on the hard times now, and, you know, yeah. I, I haven't had a bite all day. I wonder if you can help me at all. <laughs> the amazing memory man! Now, this amazing memory aid, which fits into the ear, is a triumph of micro-technology. Now, with the wizardry of modern electronics, it is now possible for a person with a poor memory to have complete recall. And it's very simple to operate. There's a simple on-off switch here. Now, I've just demonstrated I switch it off. Now, to start it all again, I just simply switch it on. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, <laughs> I, it's good here somewhere, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, did, did I have one when I, I came on? It's ridiculous. I've got a terrible memory. Somebody should invent something for a memory right now. Do I do apologise? I'll, I'll, I'll go and get it. It must be here. Sorry. Brilliant. Yes, Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. You, um, yes. you went on tour, didn't you, with this? And, and something happened in Pontypridd. Well, God. <laughs> we, we wanted to do a live show around the country. But Chris and I thought it would be a good idea to do a test show just to see what the problems could possibly be because we didn't want Sally to suffer. <laughs> so we, I don't know why, but we picked on Ponty Preeth University. No, nor do I. Shut oh, up. Shut up. Remember when Beth? Nobody's ever cheered Ponty Preeth. <laughs> We turned up at the university, met the social secretary, and he said, I've got everything organized for you. I'll show you. The side of the stage, there were 200 buckets of water, <laughs> full to the top, a tin bath full of water and a hose pipe. And he said, now I've also got you a cage. The cage was just a front with struts. So there was a the <laughs> cage. <laughs> and we did. Uh, an audition for people who should go in the cage, Chris and I, and what they had to do was to come forward and answer questions. And if they said yes, they couldn't go in. If they said no, they could go in. <laughs> <laughs> Intellectual stuff, you know. So we eventually got about 25 people in the cage, and then the show started. Chris and I started into our wonderful routine, and it meant going off to get a bucket of water, coming back on and throwing it. Well, what we hadn't anticipated, that one of the people in the cage looked, saw the bucket of water, ran off, grabbed the bucket of water full and threw it over the other people in the cage while Chris and I were in front of this. Well, that triggered off a reaction of all the other people in the cage. <laughs> they wanted to run off and they grabbed a bucket of water and started throwing it. Within seconds, the water was flowing off the stage like, like a waterfall, mm. and it was just buckets of water everywhere. The whole PA went off, Chris and I just stood there completely astounded, and I said, come on. We went and sat at the side of the stage, off stage, in two chairs, and chatted. And they were running on and off, filling the buckets, throwing them, and at one point, the social sec came on, filled his bucket, nodded to us and went to go off and then stopped and said, wait a minute, you're supposed to be doing this show. <laughs> we said, it's all right, this is part of the show. <laughs> oh, that's all right, he said. And that's all, we, we just spent the evening just sitting at the side of the stage and there's just every, every inch of water you could possibly think of uh, was thrown in the audience. Wonderful. But the Lovely. bucket thing, once we got into the whole bucket of water song which John wrote and all that, I mean, we had two or three years of obviously top yeah. of the pops and all this stuff, but everywhere we went, we'd just go to the pub and say, oh, don't mind this, Chris, and pour a bottle of beer over my head. <laughs> I'm six foot two, actually. Yes, I really mind. The worst one was Sal. We were in some, for us, quite a posh restaurant in Brighton. And this terribly well-spoken woman was having a quiet meal and talking about the next week's show, planning the show, probably. Like we did. No, probably yeah. not. It was only Thursday. But we didn't. So, so 
This woman came up with the ice bucket and went, yeah. I'm terribly sorry, do you mind? And poured the ice bucket <laughs> over Sally's head. And I go, what are you doing? He said, well, that's... And she said, well, that's what you do. I said, no, we do this on Saturdays yeah. when we're being paid, you stupid bloody... That man. also happened to me when I, was, when I was at a do at the Dorchester with Mike, and I went off to the... The booth. Dorchester? The Dorchester. Came back, wringing wet, because this woman had come out, and it was a bloke this time, with a bucket again, and sang a bit of the Bucket of Water song over my head. I go back, and Mike said, what happened to you? I said, well, just somebody met me on the yeah. way back from the lawn. <laughs> On another occasion when we were sitting in a restaurant, um, Italian restaurant, and there was a table of four, and we were sitting at this table, and one of the ladies stood up with a, a cup of water and came over and threw it over me and went back and they all laughed. I thought, well, what's going to be my reaction? We had a jug of water on the table. <laughs> I picked it up, walked over and threw it over her and her boyfriend stood up and said, no, 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 no. I said, she just threw something over me. He said, that's your job. <laughs> do you have any, do you have buckets of water thrown over you, Bob? Oh, God. Oh, yeah, just a few. <laughs> so my, my worst memory of that is making the bucket of water song and we made it in the winter time and we were going around the various fountains in Birmingham. Oh, gosh, it was so cold. And it was so freezing, wasn't it? Yeah. And we had to... So we made this, excuse me, made this video uh, of the Bucket of Water song uh, in and out of freezing cold fountains. And uh, yeah, it, it, that, that was my worst memory of it. But looking back, we look back at the actual footage of the song itself and you think, oh, it's funny. Yeah. I think the worst time that we had involving a little bit of water, we were playing Sheffield and after the show, um, it was in a, a pub called The Shoulder of Mutton. And it, oh, God, I just remember the way, yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, in the contract that Sally had to have protection on the front of the stage to stop all the fans coming up and trying to kiss her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, we'd said to the owner of the hotel, you must have security. No problems, he said. And the, when the show started, there was this row of people standing in front of hmm. age and the show proceeded and then when we came to doing the bucket of water song at the end I was on the end Bob was standing next to me and the water started and one of the security people Steve picked up a bucket and threw it at Bob and Bob said sorry I carried on finished the show went into the bar afterwards to relax <laughs> as I was standing there all the security people, they were, it was called Muffo's Mob. <laughs> and they were bikers. How? Yeah. They were proper bikers, weren't they? Muffo was enormous, like a bear. And I don't know if you remember, but the uh, Rolling Stones had had a gig quite recently with one of the security guards and killed somebody. Yeah. And there we were, that was our security. As we were, st were standing at the bar, all the, they all came outside, there were some French windows, and they walked past outside, and all this roar of the motorbikes, revving yeah. up and mooring away, and then it stopped. And then the muffles mob came to the French windows and knocked, and the landlord let them in. And Muffo sat there with some of his friends. <laughs> and I said to Muffo, I'm sorry, I, I thought you'd all gone said, Steve broke the code. <laughs> I said, well, he said, well, he threw a water, bucket of water at one of your friends, and he shouldn't have done that. So, so he said, well, we took him outside and we beat him up. <laughs> and that's why they were revving the engines. Mm. So I, I said to the landlord, can, can I buy them a pint, please? <laughs> So he said, yes, yeah. so I bought them all a pint each. Oh, thanks, lads, I can and all that. And then there was sort of a little bit of conversation, and at one point, one of them had gone into the toilets, and there'd been a, a mop bucket in there with a mop in it, and there's some water in the bottom, filthy water. And he came back in with this and threw it over me. I thought, well, hmm. <laughs> do I kill him now? <laughs> or shall I let him suffer a little bit? And of course, Muffo roared with laughter, and as Chris said, he was 
a mob on his own. And I thought, well, okay, I'll get my revenge. Picked up a water jug on the counter and threw it over him. Muffo all roared with laughter, hey, great stuff. And that, that was it then, because <laughs> I thought, stuff it. Now, if they'll accept that, and I picked the next one and threw it over Muffo. <laughs> and then Chris and I left. <laughs> yeah, very, very quickly, I should think. Um, one person who can't be here tonight is Lenny Henry. Sally, what was it like to work with Lenny? Oh, he was such, a great, great, such a great talent. I mean, he'd, already, he'd had a lot of success. He'd uh, won New Faces and then done a couple of other things. And then you didn't hear from him for a while. And then I think, Chris, you invited him back onto the show. Yeah. And it very much encouraged him to uh, come up with more and more characters. And, of course, some of those characters, you know, people will still remember today. And he just, he just sort of got a lot of confidence in those years yeah, he did. while he was doing... Pr he could practice on Tizzles, if you like. If something didn't work, he could try something else. And I think he really grew as a comic and a comedian at that we, point. Yeah, we needed somebody one week. There was some Muhammad Ali thing we'd written. I think we had Muhammad Ali on the show. We did, the yeah. So we needed something. I said, who the hell does Matt? We have they to went. remind each other what happened. I know, it's been, <laughs> it's been a while. So... Um, Somebody said, that, that kid, that Lenny Henry, who won New Faces, and he kind of disappeared. He yeah. had not looked after him. Just, and he was, I found out this guy did various impressions, including Frank Spencer and Mark and whatever. He was, he was playing, this sounds ridiculous, he was in the black and white minstrel yeah. show. And he was the only one didn't need makeup. No, but it's true. I mean, it's just so weird now, this guy did this thing. And I remember sitting in the audience watching him, and his flies burst. I've always remembered this. And I went backstage and we chatted about Tiswas and could you join us this week, whatever. And I said, that bit with the flies, it's brilliant. He went, no, it's not supposed to happen. But he was so obviously a raw-boned young talent. But he came on and did a few bits of the first series. I mean, it sounds pathetic now, but we nearly got rid of him because he was all over the place. He was, he was, like, incredibly energetic, but, you know, and one or two of the cannon and ball of people who came on and did, did sketches with Lenny said we're not sure he's not quite you know together with him. we don't know where we're going all that and we nearly dumped him but he came back the next series and he did Algernon and all those characters and he just went through the roof and the Trevor McDonald thing as well yeah. I mean that was Trevor McDonald. Well, we're going to no, see that was the classic of course. some of those clips now before we do that Bob um, a fly's got out of Spitz um... it's the Red Arrows oh is it oh Red Arrows all right yeah okay <laughs> let's watch the Lenny Henry clips please oh yes I, I can see Lenny being knighted for that. <laughs> Chris? Well, the one you haven't got, and, and it's, a lot of the clips are hard to find, um, it's the famous one where we got, the, he's Trevor McDonut, and we got the real yeah. Trevor McDonut to come on. And Lenny, for once, was just completely... I mean, he was amazing, because he rallied in a matter yeah, of seconds. Yeah. But he was completely thrown. And Tre I mean, it's something like 1976 or something, and Trevor was quite a new mm. um, reporter on ITN. And we rang ITN and said, could we have your man to come up and do this? And they went, absolutely not. He's a serious newscaster. He won't do it. And Trevor, bless him, who was not that established then, said, I'd really like to do it, Chris. It sounds like a lot of fun. Put me down for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we put him up in the Holiday Inn. We put him in the Holiday Inn next door where all the bands are very estate. Um, and at a certain point, we, we did a lot of stuff where we surprised each other and all that. And we had this thing in the running order called Double Cartoon Time. So as far as Lenny knew, tumpty 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 tum, and the item would finish going into Double Cartoon Time. But during Double Cartoon Time, I raced next door to the Holiday Inn. Trev was waiting by the front door. I put a blanket over him, and we're walking... I mean, this is Trevor McDonald, for God's sake. <laughs> and this voice underneath, this wonderful voice, goes, this really is most undignified. <laughs> but he came on... And Lenny was like, and tapped Lenny on the shoulder half his shoot, and he was like, oh my God. But it was brilliant. And then we threw buckets over the pair of them. 
Yeah. And Trev loved it. And he was, I mean, it was great that he did it. You know, a lot of people were, all oh, my bosses, I can't and all that. But Trev said, sorry, I want to And come. Trevor McDonald sat down to take over from Lenny to, uh, to, to read the news flash. Mm. And he could see that Chris was just about to throw this, this massive bucket at him. And he's got the, the, the words on a piece of paper and he tries to shield himself <laughs> holding this bit of paper up. Yeah. It's just no. so funny. As if, yeah. as if so they, that would help. They were some of the most memorable moments. Bob, yeah. what, what was one of the most memorable moments for you? Well, what I remember very well, because we used to get lots of bands that, if they were in the, the area, they'd always want to come on the show, like Quo. And the, but I John will remember this. We uh, were in a situation once where uh, the tourists, the, the band the tourists with Annie Lennox, mm. um, came on the show. And talking to them, they said, well, we're in the, uh, we're doing a live show tonight in one of the theatres. Anyone would like to come? And John and I said, yeah, we'll come along. You know. So I turned up in their dressing room, come on, if for a drink. <laughs> Turned up in the dressing room, having a drink, and uh, Annie said, uh, where's the dog? <laughs> I said, you never mentioned the dog. <laughs> oh, we wanted the dog. <laughs> so the, I, they summoned a taxi, and I phoned the hotel and said, explain to the taxi driver and the hotel receptionist, could you go and get this certain bag from my hotel room? And sure enough, the taxi driver brought it in. Mm. And um, so... What I did, <coughs> I put the dog on, and with a, it looks like a ticket, I was looking, as if I walked on the stage, as if I was looking for uh, our seats. You know, the, the place erupted, and it walked straight across, and they, the band started. And they said, what would like to do, at the very end, if you and John could come on and do the last song, and they told us what it's going to be. And we were up in the guards, we? and nobody could see us. Mm. So we went mm. on the queue, we went down backstage, I put the dog back on, John found a tambourine, remember? And to this last song, out we went. So we stood there, John over there, I'm over there with the dog, and uh, Annie Lennox and the band, they're all singing away. And suddenly I thought, what's this? If this has never happened before or since, <coughs> I'm throw, throw you throw. never happened before or since, but suddenly it looks as if it's raining, doesn't it? Yeah. And I suddenly realised people are spitting. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely true. Horrible. And us, us two and the band are moving back and back <laughs> up the stage. Because this, I mean, what, how crazy. I don't know who taught them to do that, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> what about you, John? What was your favourite moment? Well, the Queen said... <laughs> <laughs> I had a phone call from Jasper Carrot, or Robert Davis is his real name, by the way. <laughs> Jasper Carrot. <laughs> and he said... He'd been doing this programme in Birmingham called Tis Was, but he had to take leave of absence, and the producer, this was before Chris, uh, Glyn Edwards, had asked if Jasper knew of anybody that could take his place. He says, well, I know John Gorman, I can ring him up and ask him. So he, he said to me, would you do it? I said, well, I have no idea what you're talking about. Because then the programme only went out in... ATV in Birmingham and HTV in where nowhere else in the country had the program. So Glyn Edwards invited me over to Birmingham to see the show, and it was Sally, Chris, and Trevor East. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I watched it and I thought, oh, well, I, I don't know what to make of it because it's so unusual. But chatted to Glyn Edwards in the bar, having a cup of water, <laughs> and he said, well, you know, if, if you've got any ideas, let me know. So I started to send in ideas, and as I say, they went on a break after the, that first series, and this is when Chris took over. And then the program was say, we're still only going out in Birmingham and in HTV. Christmas came for the Christmas break. And during the Christmas break, and for reasons I could never understand, apart from the fact that we were brilliant. <laughs> the programme went network. Suddenly, every other television station in the country wanted to have Tiswas. So when we came back from the Christmas break, this was the news we got, and you just think, what? A silly little programme like that. But it was because we all got on so well together... Mm. We never wrote the program or created a program specifically for children. No. No, exactly. No. <laughs> Not at Sorry all. Sorry about that, kids. And 
we, we, what, what we wanted to do was put on comedy or routines which we would enjoy exactly. ourselves. And that was what had captured the hearts and minds of all the other executive television producers throughout the country. So we came back to this huge, huge success, thing. and you sit there thinking, mm. wow. Mm. Uh, Sally, what about you? What was one of your favourites? Well, there are so many, but I do remember that at one stage uh, we thought it would be a really good idea to see if we could find any very young talent out there. So we held auditions and some, you know, all the normal expected kind of things turned up, you know, people turned up rather, you know, little girl dancers, yeah. tap dancers, singers, all the very normal, regular stuff. That With you dreadful, expect, pushy you mothers. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know that we were auditioning. And then hey, this yes. little boy turned up. And he was uh, four years old, and uh, he was dressed as a rabbit. <laughs> and he sang that incredible song, Bright Eyes, which was... Really badly. Yeah. <laughs> but he was so small and oh, lovable, with his yeah. stupid ears on, eating a joke carrot. That... Well, let, let's, let's, see this, um, let's see this awful performance, shall we? <laughs> let's run it, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're having a break. We're having a break now. Would you thank again Matthew Butler, John Gorman, Bob Carroll Gees, Sally James, Chris Tarrant. Thank you. Would you welcome back the four Bucketeers? <laughs> well, uh, how did you find that first half, Sally? I thought it was rather fun. Busy, I thought. Very busy. busy. Lots of revelations, lots of fun. Yeah. And uh, now I notice for the second half, buckets have appeared. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big bucket as well behind it. Oh, this is looking very promising. Very Ooh, promising. What's going on? What's going on? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> to do that and all these children are staring at him going he's like I was there when they signed the Warsaw Treaty and these kids are going wah, wah. anyway John that's another yeah. round of applause for yeah, John Gorman thank you John that's it get him back up get him off come on
John, John, we... <laughs> yeah, John. <laughs> thank, thank you again, John Gorman. Yeah, right. Yes, all right. <laughs> well, I wonder where he got to, actually. No idea. Yeah. Um, there was a very odd occasion on Tiswas where you found people lying on their backs. Yeah. Oh, yes. Their legs and feet. Yeah. Yeah. What was that all about? It Chris. came from Jasper. It came from Carrot. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay, John. Thanks very much. Yeah. Don't, don't. Do you want to sit over there, John? Uh, thanks for sorting that out for us, yeah, John. Thanks, John. Thanks, thanks for your help. Yeah. On. Uh, Chris, the, Chris, these people lying on their backs. Well, I know. It came from Carrot, because Carrot said, what we ought to do is the doing floy. And I went, <laughs> I went, Jasper, it's a good idea. And we have little antennas on our heads. And we were in a curry house in Birmingham. And Jasper got on the table and started doing all this. And we're going, Jasper, what the f are you doing? And he went, it's the Dorian Floyd. So we, we did it the next week, thinking, we'd just do it for a couple of minutes, be funny, we played some music and all that. And it just became, again, it became this huge cult. I said that very, <coughs> I said that very carefully. Um, over the next two or three years. And, I mean, I remember going to one or two... It actually happened on my This Is Your Life, when Michael Aspel and Carrot and various oh, yeah. other things, some of you guys all we got in your it. back down all this. And Michael somehow sprang up. Chris Sharon, this is your life. And it, it was just this extraordinary, ridiculous thing we did where you lie on your back and you get your legs in the air to the music. And I did one or two, you know, presentations where, like, mainly women would do this thing. And I'm going, bloody hell, this is like... You know, <laughs> I should not be peeping at this, like, Christ. Um, but... It ended because people got sillier and sillier. People like yourselves got over ex overexcited. What's that? Like him. Exactly. People yeah. like him. Turn that camera off, you paparazzi bastard. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that. Um, people used to also, they used to kind of try and outdo each other, didn't they? Yeah. Where they would do the dying fly. And we get people, and people even tried to do it on, on, the, on, the, well, on the motorways, that right. kind of thing. And two, no, the two... ROSPA, the Royal Society for the Pre Prevention of Accidents, listed the dying fly. I think it was about the fourth most dangerous pursuit. It was. Uh, above things like hang gliding, yeah. the dying two, fly. Two people in Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> Probably near, somewhere near Pontypreet. <laughs> you know. They actually got down the dual carriageway, started doing the yeah. dying fly, Probably and you. got run over. <laughs> <laughs> let's, um, this, Seriously? This is too good an opportunity to miss. Let, let's see this remarkable activity in action. Uh, Ewan, please. It was the last dance I could do. <laughs> oh. What's over? Marvellous. <laughs> yeah. did, now, now, in did that... Did you ever did... have ginger sideboards? Because they're so... <laughs> and I thought I was... Hey, look at me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bob, oh, but I didn't see you doing the... Did you do the dive? I was commentating. I'm oh, sorry. No, no, I saw you. No, I was asking no, Bob. Bob. Oh, Bob was I did the dive preparing. Several occasions. Did you? Yep. Yeah. Mainly when flies were dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and literally, after Rosper, and this thing where it was number four or five in the most dangerous people could do, accidents and whatever, we stopped doing it. Now, of course, in that... <laughs> There's a child... That's my, that's my grandson. He was doing the dying fly. <laughs> we, 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 if anybody wants to come up and do the dying fly... We'd be... No, please. No, no, no. <laughs> Let, let's, you saw on that dying fly clip, of course, the evil side of Tiswas. Yes. Oh, yes. the phantom flan fly. Da, da, da. The blackest fiend in the, the cosmos. cosmos. <laughs> it's so difficult to try and um, talk about this evil well. doer. Um, but should we watch on screen oh. what the Phantom Flanflinger got up to? Could we, we have to? Phantom Flanflinger clips, please. Mm. This comes with a huge trigger warning, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, I'm, how could you do that to Legs and Co? <laughs> I think Chris That's really enjoyed done. it. <laughs> I remember spending one morning rolling about in custard with Annie Lennox, Sheena Easton and Chrissy Hine thinking, I'm being paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was extraordinary. And, and then it, it went on for years. Who is Wogan used to, who is the Phantom and all that? And it was basically, and the reality is, it was a lovely guy who was a mate of ours, but wouldn't have meant anything to anybody. But there was a silly week when, when he, he couldn't do it, whatever, he was away. And Jim Davison, of all people, decided, don't worry, I'll be the Phantom. But Jim, oh, Jim has a very noticeable tattoo on one arm. It was fine, he does his act and does some bits and pieces before that. He comes on as the Phantom with his sleeves rolled up. <laughs> yeah. up. So for ages we're, oh, we know the Phantom is this Jim Davis and all that. But he wasn't. He was, um, well, basically he's, he's a taxi driver from Birmingham. Taxi driver from Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. But, he's, but he's just a mate, he's a lovely guy, he came with us on the tours. And also there's, there's in him a sort of, <coughs> there's a really violent streak. I mean, he's, no, seriously, he's, you know. Here's a question, how did you find him? Well, he was in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're short of money, do this tomorrow morning. And he was there for about eight years. But, now we thought tonight, because of, you know, old age, bless him, he might not be able to make it. But, ladies and gentlemen, please, the original only Phantom Flanflinger! <laughs> He hasn't changed, has he? No. Are you oh, oh, yeah, good boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep going, Andrew. <laughs> we did say in rehearsal, whatever you do, don't. <laughs> <laughs> we never met him. Andrew. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. He'll be fine. <laughs> can, I, can I call you Phantom? Yes, you may. What, what have you been up to in the uh, years? Can <laughs> 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 someone, someone else ask the Come question? Come on, <laughs> Marshall Parker's who we keep going. Come on. OK, <laughs> you two, break it up now. Break it up. Come on. <laughs> well, it, it's really glad to have you in Bristol. I mean, um, what, what, but have you been committing... <laughs> Have you been committing havoc in the cosmos in the yeah. recent years? No, I'm a retired phantom. You're a retired phantom, yeah. Should we, um... Oh, hello. Look at it's a late note. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we... Should... The thing is, when we reveal him, it'll mean tossle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just feel we should. Sally, are you ready? Reveal him. OK, here we go, the big reveal. Oh, close your eyes. Oh. Close your eyes, please. Hey. They're, all, they're all clapping, and they couldn't give a toss, actually. <laughs> it's Benny, Benny Mills. Yay! Any bills, ladies Yay! and gentlemen. He's a hunk. And there's taxis outside. Anybody want to lift? <laughs> now, I can only read half my script, but... Um, <laughs> um, Andrew, you've got custard pie all over your face. Oh, have I? I wonder what was causing it. Yeah. And it's over your um, I was given some tissues. It's over your glasses. Um, and while, we, while, we, while, while I'm cleaning myself up, um, it's time for audience questions. Oh, good. They're roving mics who... Uh, our good friend Joe here has a roving mic. I can only see out of one eye, so I'm going to ask for questions from that side of the audience at the moment until I clean myself up. Who wants to ask the a back question? back wants to ask a question. Can you point them out to me while I just clean my glasses? Thank you. <laughs> Any excuse, Andrew? This was meant to come at the end, you know, not yes. now. Yes. <laughs> I think you might as well throw your running order away. <laughs> Did we not warn you? Want to ask a question? Yeah. This is a question for Bob. OK. Oh, God. Mr. Colgies. Are you still running your candle business? Uh, no, um, I, to, just to let you know, I started a, a candle business. Uh, funny we were in Bristol because I was the, one of the biggest suppliers and the biggest display of uh, Yankee candles in the country. And this is where they're from. Uh, they're imported into Bristol. Uh, but yeah. Wasn't it mainly sex aids? <laughs> no, I sold that business, um, it must be about 
five or six years ago. Uh, but it was, I, as I say, the biggest display. It was a massive shop selling not only candles, but uh, related things, uh, smelly things for your home. Um, and it was, I did quite well. I had five staff at one time. Uh, but no, I sold it. And the, the young couple that bought it from me, as far as I know, they're still doing very, very well. OK, that's a great one question. What down here, your question? Can you wait for the mic? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> That's not a question, is it? No, it's supposed to be a question. That was a, that was a comment, not no, a question. Can you? It's a note. It's a question, because can you, you is an interrogative. Yeah. Can you? Yes, I can. Oh, yes, yeah. I can, yes. Yeah. Well, I'm trying. Okay, have well, we got any more slightly more intelligent questions? <laughs> any more questions? Why did Tiswas stop? Do what? Why did Tiswas stop, um, Mr. Tarrant? Well, because... We, want, we didn't want to be labelled children's entertainers. We never really were anyway. And I, I mean, I don't know about the other guys. I smelt a custard. My wife smelt a custard. My kids smelt it. My, my car smelt a custard. We, kind of, we had a great time. We loved it, but we kind of had enough. And Sally did one more year, and, you know, we'd all sort of done it, really. We to, we what was to... the idea of doing big tiz? So there'd be tiz was in the morning, and then big tiz in the evening mm. and when we considered it we thought is it the same audience is it two different audiences would we have to do something to compensate the difference but in the end we reasoned that it'd be better if tis was stayed as it was yeah and then we did a late night version not i say an adult version but for adults specifically not um so we, we, we did this thing called OTT, which was... It, I mean, the thing about it, the thing that probably saved my ass, it got huge ratings at midnight. Midnight on a Saturday night live, we got 13 million and all that. Many of you are here this evening. And it... I mean, I used... I, I loved some of it. Some of it was brilliant. Lenny was absolutely magnificent during all that. Um, some of it was you know, a bit iffy, because it was live, it was experimental. We, we had a fantastic time, but every Monday morning, because I was a producer, and every Monday morning after the show, we'd come off, great night, very funny, and all that. And every Monday morning, I would go in, be wheeled into the controller's room, and just be kicked around his carpet for about three hours. Like, you did this, and then you did that, and then Lexi Sell said that, and Bernard Manning did that, and that. So, we plodded on for a series. It was hugely successful. Um, but it was the one time where... I mean, I remember the first show that went out, the next morning in Birmingham, um, this vicar said, I do not want to preach my normal sermon today. Will you all close your eyes and pray that Central Television take that dreadful OTT off? <laughs> He's a bloody vicar, for Christ's sake. But talking about vicars, we were filming in a church, and Alexi Sale was going to sing, I went to your wedding, although oh, yeah. I was dreading the thought of seeing you. And we're all in the vestry, wait, waiting, the cameras were set up, and a cameraman runs in and says, we're going to have to leave, a funeral has turned up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember that. I said, well, look, it can't be, I mean, I, we cleared this with the vicar, so I ran round the back to the vicarage, knocked on the door, the vicar came out, and I said, a funeral has turned up. He says, well, I haven't got one booked. And <laughs> we looked down the drive, and there, coming through the gates, was six people carrying a coffin with a cortege behind. And he went down to speak to them and came back and said, they've come to the wrong chair. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but but and we the, the, still got roasted anyway. The, the press, local press, like, the press said... OTT, the sacrilege, the funeral to go to another yeah. church and not to bother them. It was yeah. so untrue. Can I ask if there are any questions from the, the, the people up top? I can't actually see anybody, but... Um... I'm not sure most of them... <laughs> Hello. Yeah, you, uh, It'll probably help there should if be you a tell mic us up where there. That you are. There should be a mic up there. Can you, is there a mic up there? Hello. Where are you, madam? OK. The back of the bottom. Hello. Oh, the bottom, OK. I've got a question for That's you. That's not the same woman. No, I know. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say that uh, for a lot of teenage boys, Sally James presented this kind of iconic vision of perfection. 
But there was, there was a, a number of teenage boys that thought differently. And uh, I dare say a lot of teenage girls as well that thought that the flaxen-haired, beautiful Adonis, the Apollo that was Chris Tarrant, <laughs> was a sex symbol. And I just wondered what it was like for you both to be so brilliantly um, sensual can you and beautiful can you in the up, 1970s please? and can we a sexual it? icon. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, good question. Very good, good question. question. Thank you very much. Don't be a twat. Now, let's all show <coughs> There's a question at the Can back from a... Nice little short question, yeah. please. And then we've got to move on. Is there one there? Yeah? OK. Hi. Um, can I ask two questions? Is that oh, OK? Good. Where are you? No? OK, one question. Um, just as this is for Bob Cowdery's then. Um, I was very sorry to hear about your um, frozen hand. Um, and I just wanted to know if you've ever tried something called CBD, because... I've been using it uh, for my pain because I'm disabled and it's really okay. helped me. So that's my question. I have to. Yeah. I, 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 I tried. I tried loads of things. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> I, have you ever thought of having it chopped off, Bob? You know. Okay, let's finish the question time now. <laughs> um, might be another custard pie in the face. Oh, yeah. Come on. Um, there, there's this, tonight we're raising money for a charity in the Southwest, the Children's Hospital, Hospice Southwest, and we're very grateful for all the support. Um, I'll tell you that, I'll tell you that. There'll, there'll also be an auction, as we see here, so items, original items signed and donated by the, ti uh, by the team. Uh, do register at the email at the website there and you'll have a chance to bid on some of those uh, unique uh, items so please do um all do signed some. all signed yeah. and Not thank you very us, much for your donations now there's also another reason tonight why we're um, uh, here which is to give a special award to our guests Ooh. would you welcome the director of slapstick festival <laughs> chris daniels hooray <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's it's working. Works. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, yes. So. Oh, speech. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, look, it's very short. It's a very short speech here. Look. And now the moment you've all been waiting for is the slapstick legacy award presentation. <gasps> Usually we ask all the recipients to roll up their left trouser leg. Okay. And get on one knee, and. Oh no, that's the other award. Um, Slapstick Festival exists really to bring joy, pleasure and laughter to people. It's just as simple as that for us really. And what we celebrate, and what we've been celebrating for 18 years now, are the people who bring that joy and laughter and happy memories to others and to members of the public. Tiswas did that, very good. Tiswas did that for millions and millions of people for almost a decade. And it looks like it continues to do that today and is still giving pleasure to people. And that's why we're here, really, to thank you here for creating the chemistry that led to one of the funniest, anarchic and precious television series in the history of British the television. The Legacy Award has been awarded previously to Matt Lucas for his courageous work, because it's difficult creating silent comedy in the, in the 21st century on Pompidou. Roy Hudd for his work on Maladjusted Busker. Uh, Steve Shearsmith, Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton, Inside Number Nine. Melvin Hayes, Double Deckers. And the cast and writers of The Young Ones, so the list goes on. But this award is for slapstick comedy, for the anarchy, fun, general silliness, we say on the award, when you receive the award, it says that this is for work in the footsteps of the great silent clowns. And for this, we honour you four, five, tonight. Mm. But first, we just have a couple of extracts of guests from the show. 
You may have wondered what I grew up to be. Well, a helicopter. <laughs> anyway, have a great celebration of tis was. What wonderful madness that was. Anyway, uh, have a great day, have a great celebration. And uh, the charity you're supporting is a children's hospice in the southeast. Brilliant. Have fun. Uh. Well, there you are. That's just about it for now. Morning. Yeah, We've thoroughly enjoyed the show this morning. Uh, the usual big uh, lineup of superstars lining up now, signing a few autographs. And um, there they are. I can see tourists and darts are uh, very, very busy. I think. Uh, over on the uh, far side over there, I can just about see Paul Hughes. I think he's getting a lot of There's Paul. Uh, he's next to the one in the cowboy hat. There's uh, there's Debbie moving through. She's getting Annie's uh, autograph now. There's Mark. There's uh, Mary. There's Jason. I can see Jason in there. Um, there's Carmel. Carmel Plant. She's just getting an autograph. That's right. There's the Phantom Flamflinger. The Phantom Flamflinger! Oh, no! Will this man stop at nothing? Will his vile reign of terror never end? There go the Buckets of water! Oh, foulness upon foulness! Oh, calumny heaped upon calumny! This is appalling! This is disgraceful! These people have travelled overnight, slept in laybys to get on this show, and this is all you can do for them! There go the custom pies! That's horse manure! I don't know what that is, but it smells dreadful! This is disgraceful! This is sort of treatment that tis was meets out to these superstars! Chris, Lenny, Sally, John, Bob. Congratulations, Congratulations. on the award. Because Tiswas was always a greatest pleasure to do, despite usually having a gig the night before, having to travel to Birmingham, uh, getting up far too early o'clock to sing an a cappella in a cage with a voice like an old piece of leather and getting all sorts of shite flung at you. Ah, oh, bye, the <laughs> phantom flung, fling, flung, flung, flinger. It's it was magnificent it. chaos. It, like? Well done, it was totally unique. And, well, I still remember it, and I don't remember much these no, days. No, I have to look on YouTube to remember it, actually. <laughs> and just in case you don't remember, oh. I'm Rita, this is Griff. How do you do? We're from the band Darts. We were on loads of times, and we did love being on it. So, thanks for the memories. Thank you. And have a drink on us. Well on bright eyes. So congratulations on your slapstick medal. They're very rare and nothing like a blue piece of badge. Or a Tiswas mug for that matter. Those things used to get handed out like candy floss. Anyway, so it was a, a, a wonderful experience to be sat next to Sally in the year 1981 to 1982 when Tiswas finally closed its doors. But that wasn't my first time on Tiswas. No, my first time on Tiswas was as a musical guest back in the back in your heyday. So it would be the four of you on set uh, with me in the in the cage, me in the swamp, wherever I might be, and I was always on the receiving end of whatever it was. So it set me up nicely for what came later. So. Once again, congratulations, and it's back to the studio. Hey, bunch of flowers! <laughs> Pretty begonias, tulips, chrysanthemums. <laughs> <laughs> then arrange them Ar artistically in a vase. Now, tis was, that was good fun. That was really, really good fun. You could go up to Birmingham and be as silly as you liked for a morning, which is, is something you can, you know, can't say for every city in the world. So thank you for, thank you for tis was. Thank you, Chris, Sally, John, Bob, and of course, Lenny for um, memorable, memorable days we spent up there. I speak for myself and also for dear Terry, Terry Jones, if he were with us, um, I'm sure he'd be standing uh, beside me to say those were... Those were days when you could just do anything um, and uh, there weren't many programmes that allowed you to do that. So here's to self-indulgence, here's to Tiswas, here's to a very good time and congratulations to you all on your medals. Medal for comedy. Mm.
pretty good. Don't eat them. No, don't eat them! Here's something which is interesting. Wife young. <laughs> Something interesting. Sylvester McCoy, after he did that, went on to join the Royal Shakespeare Company. <laughs> <laughs> when we first met Sylvester, he, he, he's actually trained in the circus. He did all these weird and wonderful backflips. He's a very funny man. Good, good fun. But we, he was also ever so slightly potty. So we were filming down in uh, Herefordshire, went to this big posh hotel called the Wai Valley Hotel. And for whatever reason, Sylvester had already checked in about an hour before. And for no, this is Sylvester's brain, for no reason at all, he'd opened the lounge window and there's all these big rollers and bentlers and things all parking up, whatever. And he'd thrown himself into the bushes backwards saying, don't eat the fish. <laughs> For no reason at all. <laughs> and that night they had speciality turbo. Oh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> Big potty. And Palin, I mean, everybody thinks of Palin. The younger generation think of Michael as a, you know, travelling broadcaster. A lot of people don't forget, do forget how funny he was. He was potty. Oh. We, did, we did attract a lot of people who were ever so slightly off the bloody wall. <laughs> but he was wonderful. He loved it. Michael always said, being silly is fun. And we sort of liked being silly. Because yeah. it was like, forget about intellectual stuff and political stuff, whatever. Being silly. And he was bloody silly. But, you know. It was Palin that came up with the title of OTT. Yeah, yeah. And, and Sally and Bob, what, what do you think about getting this award? Oh, it's, it's lovely. It, do you know what is fantastic? That if you think about it, I mean, when you count the number of years ago that we finished this show, which is like nearly 40 years now, and it's just oh really quite humbling that 40 years later, people are still talking about this and giving us an award for it. I mean, it's I think really special, it's, I think. I think it's quite mm. sad, actually. Mm. <laughs> Bob, 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 it's, it's not it's sad, Bob, is it? It's, it's a bit yeah. embarrassing, to be honest. Uh, I think it's lovely that people remember us all this time later yeah, exactly. and, uh, and, and appreciate us and give us something like this. It's fantastic. Um, I think we should do the whole show all over again, yes? Yeah. I'll get stuffed. And, and just one final, um, Benny, Hello. you got an award for being evil. I mean, what's yeah. that feel like? Well, my strings were pulled by that gentleman there. No. I was... Sorry. I, I used to say, I was, Benny, you see those children guys come from a long all. time and... Uh, it's a directive. Uh, you mind, I'm told. <laughs> Be, be careful, Chris. Yeah, and uh, mask, I was told from day one, you don't speak. So wherever I was, I never spoke. All right. I was dumb. I was dumb for about eight years. <laughs> if, we shouldn't forget that we should be serious now because Tiswas was also very educational. And they taught... <laughs> no, actually... No, it's true. Actually, it was actually... Taught me a lesson. <laughs> taught me a lesson. And we used to do certain items that meant a lot to a lot of young people, a lot of kids, and it was things they will remember, weren't they, for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So shut up. Yeah. <laughs> no, we should, be, we should be serious about this, because I think it, it was yeah. the yeah. court and rolling children's television. So, yeah. and, and one of those was about teaching people about the water cycle, wasn't it? The water it? cycle. Oh. So, it was a classic. I mean, John and Chris, do you want to tell people about the water cycle? <laughs> now, you can take notes if you want, but this is very important. This lesson will last you the rest of your lives, which in many cases doesn't look like very long. Now, as you all know, there is the ocean, mm -hmm. full of water. Yep. The sun comes along, shines on the water, and it makes the water evaporate and form clouds. Yep. The wind blows those clouds inland. Yep. Then they meet when, high, high ground. When the clouds reach the high ground, they rise and the 
water vapour in the clouds condenses into water and it rains down that? the hillside. That flows down the hill into the streams and the rivers and then into the dam and then when it's in the dam it, it then all the households are connected <laughs> yeah. no, keep all talking. the households are connected to the dam and when you turn your tap on out comes the water and you fill your bucket with, exactly like this. with water and you do that <laughs> shush this is educational okay shush concentrate so you fill your bucket with water then you've got to get rid of the water The water flows down the hill, goes into the ocean. The sun comes out, evaporates the water. The water causes clouds. Clouds come in land. The wind blows. It goes up the hill. It condenses. The water comes down as rain. It goes down the hill into the rivers, into the into the dam, and then from the dam it goes to the houses. You gate your bucket. You fill, you fill your bucket with water, and then when you've got to get rid of your water, <coughs> the water goes down back into the ocean. It gets evaporated into clouds by the sun. The clouds come inland. It rains down there, goes down the hillside, into the rivers, and back down into the houses, down to them. Into a tap? Into your house, and then when your house, you fill it full of water. <coughs> <laughs> you have to get rid of the water. Now, the water flows down the hill into the ocean. Let's do this one more time. Come on, just concentrate. Into the ocean, goes evaporated by the sun, comes in land as, as clouds, it rains when it rises because of the condensation, comes down the hill into the river, into the bed, into the step, and then it goes into the dam and it comes from the dam and it goes to the houses and we go to the tap. <laughs> One more. One more. Right, one more. Very educational, John. Thank you so much. <laughs> anyway, the water goes down the hill, goes up there, down the hill, down the hill into the water, and you have to fill your bucket. <coughs> it's fine. Go. <laughs> fine. Well, the water gets you back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So I hope we clear that up. Thank you. Very educational. Marvellous. Very educational. Thank you. You see, I said. Very educational. Why, why, is, why is water so wonderful? Well, this is the reason. Let's have the next clip. When we see some water inside a bucket Buckets out the ready, oh, come on then oh, 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 Scouses, we're going we to pour it down our trousers. Rise on and go now to your faucet. Pour lots of water into your pocket. Now, of course, 
Of course, there's one more song that we need to sing together. Oh, yes. Which got into the top 30. So Nay, you the all, top 20. Top 20, even better. Would you all join in the Bucket of Water song? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this record proudly presents the Four Bucket Tears. This is the song we love as a water sing. We can't go wrong. Stand on one leg and point up at the sun. Grab hold of your nose, for sure it must be fun. But no matter who or what you are, we know something will enjoy by far to sing out the song. The fuck is a water song? This is the song that lovers of water sing. You've been a challenge, <laughs> but you have had, I'm sure you've had, you seem to have had a really good night. We've had a great time. God bless you, and thanks for the memories. Bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, thank you to Slapstick for all the brilliant organisation. Thank you to St George's. Thank you to Slapstick's insurance for covering any damage tonight. Um, they've all gone off, but thanks again to the four Bucketeers, to Matthew, and to the Phantom Flanflinger. Thank you. Yeah.